Okay, I, I have a question that turns us around a little bit, and that is, um, you've been talking about the candidates and your view of them, but I wanted to ask the three foreign journalists a little about journalism um, and how it's different in, uh, or may or may not be different in this country than it is in your countries. Uh, there's a column in today's New York Times by Paul Krugman, which uh, points out uh, the, uh, the uh, somewhat outrageous uh, uh, proliferation of what turns out to be completely false uh, statements about the various candidates and their supporters, and with the press kind of doing a kind of a gotcha of its own, takes on a life of its own. Could you comment on whether those standards exist uh, in your journalism in your countries as it applies to uh, politics, or whether this is something uniquely American and what your judgment is of it? <laughs> However depressed you might feel about the decline in, in the quality of American journalism, it is nothing in comparison to the trashification that's gone on. Now, I am delighted that Mr. Murdoch is investing in the Wall Street Journal, but I have to say, and, this is, and I think the Wall Street Journal will be safe, its quality will be safe, but I have to say the Murdoch effect on Britain um, has been disastrous. Um, he really has taken it into the gutter. Um, and I don't, I don't think Murdoch was anything other than shrewd in doing so. We, we've got into the habit of blaming media and politicians for reflecting our own sins. And what, what I find depressing about it is when I go back to Britain and I read the tabloids and I watch once very, very high standard BBC and other TV channels who've also gone tabloid, um, is that it, it would be really easy just to blame it on Mr. Mur Murdoch. But if it were just his fault, then why is he still making money hand over fist? Um, it's because there's a demand for it. Um, and so it's a rather bleak picture. Uh, I, I think America is following, but I don't think it's there yet. And I think you've still got some really fine, not least the Wall Street Journal, some very fine publications. Um, You've also got some very fine new media, which is, does provide some sort of new horizon optimism there, as do we in Britain. Um, so it's not all bleak, but I have to say it's mostly bleak. Let me make one small demural, and it has nothing to do with the ownership of the newspaper I work for. It has to do with the seen and the unseen. What you see often, and there's never been a golden age of journalism, people are always complaining about how standards are falling. It has ever been thus. I will say this, there's, I, I worked in Hollywood briefly, and there's a Sturgeon's Law in Hollywood to explain how people pick out the good movies. Sturgeon's Law is basically, I'm gonna clean it up, 90% of everything produced is junk. That's how you know something is good, because you have something to compare it to. 90% of all journalism hasn't always been pedestrian or sensational or not particularly living up to the highest of standards. Today, with the internet, any human being on the planet can access quality journalism for free. All you have to have, and you know, if you get one of the cheap computers that Nicholas Negroponte and MIT is trying to give to children in the third world, um, all you need is an internet connection, and he has solar-powered computers to help them get that. You can have access to every bit of quality journalism in the world. That is more important a development than the decline in standards of any publication because now there is access to both the best and the worst of journalism for everyone. People can choose. I hope they choose wisely, but the fact that they can choose and have access to the very best that's written by all of the writers up here and many, many others is a major advance in conveying information to people and we should celebrate that. Can I make a Please. quick point? Uh, the, the more I've studied all this and lived through it, uh, the more I realize that education is the key to the whole thing. Uh, what I worry about, and I agree, I agree with John about the internet providing a marvelous ability to access quality journalism uh, from any of these publications, whether it's Haaretz or the Financial Times or the Journal or the German newspapers and so forth, 
by the way, which you can translate if you need to. Do you have an English language version of your website? No, no we don't. But you can translate it. Some of the translations are hilariously funny, but you can still, <laughs> figure, still figure it out. Uh, it's, it's really remarkable. But in order to appreciate it, in order to put that into perspective, in order to take advantage of it as a citizen of this new world, you need some education. And if you were at one of the earlier panels that I was uh, listening to either today or yesterday, uh, the, the, and, and even this evening over at uh, the panel uh, that Michael Sandel and, uh, and Ted Widmer did on political speech, uh, the average level of a, of a speech, the average grade level of a speech, of a great political speech has gone from like 12th grade level to down to 6th grade level. I, I'll leave it to your imagination to guess which speech maker speeches at the si uh, speaks at the 6th grade level. Uh, <laughs> The, the combination of, uh, 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 that's one example, that's one anecdotal example. Another is uh, what's happening in American education in the terms of uh, reading levels and math levels and so forth. It, it, it's, 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 it's pretty scary. And I think the founders of our country and, and all great countries know that uh, if we're going to lead ourselves, we have to be educated enough to do so. And what I, what I worry about is that we can't, tell ourselves that the, it, the tabloids are okay and that has ever been thus and the top 10% can access the internet and read the quality papers and read the, uh, you know, see the best uh, video from around the world. Uh, that's not enough because if people don't have enough education to be able to somehow rationally uh, put it into perspective, and I'm talk not talking about uh, the, uh, the Academy at Athens here, I'm just talking about basic common sense uh, that can't just be visual, that can't just be a sound bite, that can't just be seven seconds, it's got to be a little bit more, then we're not going to be able to survive in that, this next century. And Ed was talking about the, inter, the interwar period there after World War I and the, uh, the end of the, uh, the Pax Britannica. It's probably, it is an imperfect analogy, but the first thing I thought of when he mentioned that uh, was the scary turn to simple answers uh, that so many people in supposedly enlightened democracies uh, turn to in that time of chaos and confusion. Uh, and that, that's something we should all think about. So I worry about that. I think to me education is the key <laughs> for all of us. If you take one thing away from here and all of what you're doing are here is educating yourselves in the world. Uh, that's any good journalism is, journalism is going to depend on decent education for the readers. Viewers. Please go, please go. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, I'm now living here three years, and I have the highest respect uh, for part of the US media. You really have to, to do a distinction. Your national newspapers are just very, very, very good. They are doing now, since 2005, the checks and balances, not only for the mistakes of your own administration. I can also say that as far as German citizens were victims of detention or whatever, it was not German media who did the investigation of those cases. They could find all the information earlier in the US uh, newspapers. Of course, the colleague who was here before me, who witnessed uh, 2003, 2004, all the mistakes about Iraq, WND, and so on. So the, the major US newspapers were not so splendid all the time. But in the time I have been living here, really highest respect. Swiss TV is a little bit more mixed. Of course, it's fun to watch uh, election night with all these new charts and uh, this possibility. You know what I'm talking about. But generally, I would say TV program here is worse than in Europe, at least in Germany. And of course, um, provincial newspapers, um, they are not political enough for, for, for what w I am looking for. And here I'm coming to the last point. The problem is not with the media. The problem is mainly with the users of the media. If much more people would be interested to use all the splendid work of the better newspapers in the States. Then, I mean, I wouldn't travel and find a lot of people who still think that Barack Obama is a Muslim or that Hillary is standing almost every week in a bar and drinking a beer and a shot <laughs> afterwards and, uh, and, and so on and so on. So the information is there, but much more citizens should be using it, especially in an election year.